Hi, in this video you'll learn about the binomial random variable. We're going to look at a particular example of number of bit transmission errors. So here's the example. On this page I really just want to discuss why this is a binomial random variable. So the problem, the probability um, that a bit transmitted through a digital transmission channel is received in error is 0.1. So the probability it's received not in error is 0.9 complementary events. Assume that the transmission trials are in independent. This is a big word for a binomial random variable to model with one. You need independent events. We're going to let x represent the number of bits in error in the next four bits transmitted. So that's another thing with a binomial. You're going to do something n times. In this case, our n is going to be 4. And another thing about the binomial is you need a constant probability of success. Unfortunately, here we're calling a success uh, a bit that got transmitted in error. But when you say x is the number of successes, successes just means the number of times an event happened. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. So don't be disturbed here that actually a success is a bit being transmitted in error. But the probability of that happening is 0.1, and that stays constant. So for a binomial random variable, to model it as a binomial, we really need to check three things. And again, the first is the trials are independent. So what this means in this example is one bit getting transmitted in error doesn't make it more or less likely that the next one will be transmitted in error. That probability stays constant at 10%. So the first thing we have is independent trials. Okay, so we meet that condition. Um, secondly, each trial for binomial, just as in the name by, has two uh, options for what could happen. So in this case, um, when you transmit a bit, it's either an error or not an error. So two uh, possible outcomes. So two outcomes only. So that works. Either it's an error or it's not an error. And the last thing that we've already stated is that probability has to stay constant. It can't change after every transmission. The probability of having a transmission error can't change uh, across the board. It stays. So P is constant. And uh, so we have a binomial random variable. And binomial random variables, what I always think of, uh, a nice example if you just want to put in your memory, x is the number of successes in n trials. And for me, I like to think of foul shooting. So x is number of shots made uh, out of a finite number of shots you take, let's say n. So n x is going to be the number of shots made out of n, where the probability of success stays constant, and uh, n is a finite number, and your trials are independent. So making one free throw doesn't make it less or, lo or more likely that you'll make the next. So imagine, again, after class today uh, or after school, you go down to the gym. Let's say you shoot 10 free throws and x is going to be the number of shots you made. So the number of shots you made could go anywhere from the support of that random variable is the number of shots you made. could be anywhere between 0, 1, all the way up to 10. Uh, let's say you're a 60% free throw shooter. So we're going to put the probability of success on each trial as 0.6. And that p is going to stay constant. And we're also assuming the trials are independent. One shot, if you make one shot, it doesn't make it more or less likely that you make another. So again, you're always looking for a binomial. Look, look for that story. You go do something n times. You're counting how many times you were successful, two outcomes on each trial, finite number of trials, and your probability of success success stays constant. So let's get back into this particular example and I thought I would write out the details on the next page but I just wanted to point out again that this is a binomial and sometimes it's hard to determine what kind of random variable you have but we're set up nicely here for a binomial. So uh, we were letting x be the number of bit transmission errors. p was the probability of success, which in this case is a bit transmission error, is 0.1. It's staying constant. The number of trials, or the number of bits we're going to transmit, are 4. 
and each bit as it comes across, it's either an error or not an error. There's two choices. We're trying to determine the probability that the random variable x is 2, that there are two transmission errors. So maybe it's just as nice, instead of looking exactly at 2, that we build this guy's probability mass function, f of x for a binomial. So f of x, and let me just write out here, um, that x can take on the value 0 to 4. There may be no transmission errors. There could be one transmission error. There could be two, there could be three, or there could be four. And I think if we look at the end cases, it's easiest. I mean, what's the probability that there are four transmission errors? That means I had a transmission error and a transmission error and a transmission error. So all four of them were an error. So that's 0.1 to the fourth. Um, that's the, uh, the intersection of four transmission errors being an error, and I'm looking also at independence so I can just multiply. Up here, the probability of no transmission errors means all four went through quite nicely. There were no errors, so this is 0.9 to the fourth. And in between now, we're just going to have uh, combinations of 0.9 and 0.4. So to have one transmission error, that's going to be 0.1 to the first times 0.9 to the third, accounting for the three that were not in error. But I have to think here, there, there are four different ways that I could have just one transmission error. It could have been the first one I transmitted, so we could say um, good. Well, actually, let's go, if it were their errors, we could have a bad one and then good, good, good. Or we could have the first one be good, the second one be bad, and then good, good. We could have had a good, good, the third one be a transmission error. Or we could have had good, 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 everything looks good, but then the fourth is a transmission error. So there's four ways right here that I could have had exactly one transmission error, so I have to multiply this by four. When in fact, if later with the binomial, what we see is this is actually just four choose one. Okay, so here is going to be four choose two transmission errors, choosing two of them to be an error out of four, 0.1 squared and 0.9 squared. And then this last is four choose three, 0.1, let's say this is to the third, so three were an error and one wasn't. So right here we have the probability that x equals 2, there were two transmission errors. And just for extra practice, let's go ahead and find what this is. So first, just to remember, the binomial coefficient for choose 2 is just by definition 4 factorial divided by um, r factorial and n minus r factorial. So this will turn out, once we do all the multiplication, this is just 6. So the probability that there were true transmission errors is 6 times 0.1 squared times 0.9 squared. And this turns out to be 0.0486. So the probability of exactly two transmission errors is about 5%. Um, so I hope this helped. I hope the explanation of the binomial will stick with you. Just remember it as a story of you do something n times, you're counting the number of successes, probability stays constant, two outcomes, and I have independent trials. So this is exactly um, the setup of this problem we just looked at with the transmission errors. Uh, we set up here the probability mass function of a binomial, and then we calculated it exactly f of 2. Okay, so there is our binomial example, and we'll talk again soon.